Even though it's been one of crypto's toughest years, we're seeing more and more blockchain adoption taking place every single day. Now, industry giants like Sony and Coinbase are building their own blockchains. But there's a huge key point that needs to be made. Web3 is currently and effectively being beat down into submission with regulations. So choosing the right network that offers scalability and decentralization is now more important than ever for these big industry players. And that's exactly why we're breaking down Polkadot's new roadmap. We're discussing the Polkadot 2.0 upgrade and how it compares to existing Ethereum scaling solutions like Arbitrum, ZK Sync, and others. Stay tuned as we detail some of the key differences between these approaches and why we think Polkadot's new block space vision is extremely compelling. All right, so let's add some context and briefly go over the current scaling solutions proposed on Ethereum. We know that Ethereum is a layer one blockchain. It provides decentralization, computation, and security. When you perform a transaction on Ethereum, it gets registered in a block and validated. But we also know that when there's a large amount of transactions, like during DeFi summer or the NFT craze of 2021, the demand for the block space increases. Everyone is fighting to get their transactions into a single block, causing a spike in costs, slower speeds, and even failed transactions. Result in a poor user experience and lost funds. So how are they fixing this? Currently, Ethereum is scaling via several off-chain computational methods that post smaller, compressed data to Ethereum called ZK Snarks. In this case, 99% of the work is done off-chain, which actively scales ETH about 100x, going from 12 TPS to about 1200 TPS, which is actually still pretty low. But let's continue. These ZK Snarks are computational proofs given when data is verified and put into a block. The work is done off-chain, and this way you don't validate the block itself but instead just the proof that this complex computation was performed and the block is valid. This data signature is overall smaller, so less data is needed to post on chain, thus it's a less expensive transaction. There are different methods used to perform this function which include optimistic rollups, such as Arbitrum and Optimism, or ZK rollups like ZK Sync and Starkware. Each of them gives their own benefits and trade-offs, but they all focus on one thing, getting transactions off Ethereum and into these side chains that piggyback off Ethereum security. For example, for example, optimistic rollups work with what's called fraud proofs, or an assumption that the posted data or rolled up data in a block is correct. This allows optimistic L2 blockchains to be easier to design and implement since they can use the same dApps and smart contracts built on ETH with minor changes. But it also means that they're still fighting for the same block space as people using ETH mainnet. ZK rollups like ZK Sync, StarkNet, and Polygon's ZK EVM also roll up transactions off-chain and submit their zero-knowledge validity proofs to the mainnet. These ZK validity proofs are guarantees that the computational work has been done to validate that block. It doesn't assume it's correct like optimistic rollups function with fraud proofs, which admittedly comes with its own own set of complexity if it turns out that the fraud proofs were incorrect. Nonetheless, ZK rollups offer better and faster scaling, but they are typically harder to launch because you can't easily port over your EVM smart contracts, meaning you have to create a zero-knowledge EVM specifically designed for your chain so smart contracts can be updated with new logic in order to work. However, ZK solutions still offer the most promising long-term scaling, but the result is the same. They're all posting transactions to blocks on Ethereum, which means they're fighting for the same block space as ETH mainnet users and optimistic rollup users and everyone else who's trying to put data into Ethereum blocks. Now, we can't go on without mentioning that EIP4844 is the proposal that will bring about proto-dank sharding, and it also looks very promising, but this deserves a whole other comparison video, and who knows how long it will take to get this upgrade implemented, especially considering it took multiple years to get staking released on ETH mainnet. So where does Polkadot end up in comparison to all of this, and how does their future view differentiate? Earlier this summer, Gavin Wood, one of the three original Polkadot founders, revealed a new and exciting roadmap at Polkadot Decoded 2023. What's the key takeaway? Away, a massive shift in Polkadot's scaling architecture that will create the world's most secure and versatile block space. But how are they doing this and why is it important? Well, first we have to understand the basis of where he's coming from. Gavin and crew see blockchain scaling at the fundamental level of block space and the applications which are built that use it. Meaning the importance of scaling is not really about creating more blockchains that provide more blocks to use, which is what Polkadot originally did with parachains or app chains as some ETH L2s are branding right now, but more so 
know about the quality of the block space, how it's allocated, and the apps that use that block space to create value on chain. Now, I know this may sound a little confusing, so let me rephrase it this way. We understood it originally as a way to scale block space without necessarily scaling its parameters, like making it bigger or making more of it which would increase validator requirements and lead to centralization. But really, it's more about making the block space itself become more agile and distributed more effectively, thus increasing its overall efficiency so you have better outcomes like lower fees and faster transactions that ultimately help millions and billions of end users. Okay, so how does this work and what's the difference from the current auction model on Polkadot? In this new core time or block space model, two types of sales would occur, bulk and instantaneous. Bulk refers to a monthly sale of designated block space. And instantaneous, or on-demand, is where you pay for block space as you need it. This gives parachains the freedom and capability to access more or less processing power as they see fit. Currently, we're still in the lease auction model where parachains are connected to the Polkadot relay chain with one core for a two-year lease. Here, this one core is always producing blocks, and those blocks are being validated by the relay chain, even if they're not being used. Which leads to a massive amount of wasted block space, resources, and computational power that could be used to scale the network more effectively. Think of it like this. Imagine you left a beautiful V10 Dodge Viper running on idle, or used it to drive to the grocery store instead of embracing its max potential and insane horsepower to participate in drag races. In this case, you have an incredibly powerful engine, but you're just using it for menial tasks. Well, that's exactly what's happening in Polkadot right now, but now this is changing. Polkadot is working to increase the amount of cores from 50 to around 500 to 1,000, which means more block space available for expansion and ramping up. Great, so how does this Agile Polkadot upgrade help new and existing teams? I'm glad you asked. It basically opens up a huge development playing field. Let me explain. Teams will be able to scale block space as they need, reducing the barriers to entry and facilitating innovation. This means that if a parachain's activity is low and it only needs a small amount of blocks, they now have the option to more efficiently scale back. Conversely, if there's an event where more block space is needed, like a massive NFT mint, where all of a sudden there's a crazy increase in transactions, activity, and demand, then the option to increase the amount of block space is there for that parachain. This would increase throughput, lower fees, and lead to better user experience. See, there's a ton to be excited about. We're really happy to see Polkadot's new change in direction. Instead of making excuses or shifting blame, Dot is working and evolving through their original design weaknesses. And the project is continuing to build huge partnerships, some of which have just recently formed. The release date for this 2.0 upgrade is looking like early 2024, but one thing is for sure, it's bringing a lot more changes than this. Block space sales is just one of them. The upgrade also has the potential to affect the tokenomics of the DOT token in many ways, like implementing burn mechanisms. But these are topics for future videos. In the end, Gavin Wood and company realized that the current lease auction model created a lot of barriers that didn't play well with developers who wanted to experiment. But the great thing about Polkadot is that it can adapt and change quickly. Forkless upgrades are amazing, and its ability to adapt quickly brought about this new block space model. The longer time goes on, the more data is gathered and the more the DOT protocol can mature. Even though there's still a lot of details to work out, we think the future of Polkadot is bright. For more crypto news and education, follow us.